This morning I want to share with you about faith. A lot of the time the word faith in scripture is used in relation to God and the circumstances of our lives that we are going through. And in Hebrews 11, 1 defines faith as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And then in verse 6, he clarifies what he has said in verse 1 by adding, but with, without faith, but without faith, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Believing that God is, exists is only, is only the beginning. For there are many who believe in the existence of some divine being, but they do not give their lives to God. Even the demons believe in God, believe in God but they do not worship God. God wants more than just an acknowledgement of his existence. His desire, his desire is that you and I will have a personal relationship with him, and that comes through having faith in him. Our faith, let me personalize it a little bit, your faith, my faith will determine much of what you see, much of what I see during the season where God is moving. And we don't have to wonder if God is moving in our midst. Last weekend, we had an amazing weekend. We had over 40 people getting water baptized. Amen? I think that deserves a shout of praise to our God because it's Him doing it. You see, whether we will see a greater demonstration of God's power working in this place and in our lives individually has everything to do with our faith. I would say as well, Given the times that we, that we are living, there's never been a time when it's been more important for God's people to demonstrate an active, a vibrant, a hope-filled, and an effective faith. It shows people the difference it makes by knowing Christ. We're living in amazing times, church, and people are looking to see the reality of Jesus Christ. The only way they can see the reality of Jesus is through you. Faith is absolutely essential. It's not optional. It's essential. You can't be saved without faith, the Bible tells us. Yeah. Ephesians 2, 8, it says, For it is by grace that you have been saved. How? Through faith. You have to have faith to be saved. You can't see miracles without faith. You can't see healing without faith. You can't see God's promises come to life without faith. It reminds me of a story of Jesus when he went to his hometown in Nazareth. And there he is. And if, the, if there is anywhere that Jesus knew the needs, if there was anywhere that Jesus wanted to see people touched and healed, restored and ministered upon, it would have to be his hometown. But in Matthew 13, 58, it tells us, and he, it says, that is Jesus, did not do many miracles there. You want to know why? Because of the lack of faith. If you and I are not living with an active, vibrant faith, we will mess out on much of what God wants to do in your life and my life and in the life of the church. Can I say that again? If you and I are not living with an active, vibrant faith, we're going to mess out on what, of what God wants to do in your life and my life and in the life of the church. Two blind men came to Jesus in Matthew chapter 9. You can read it later. It says that Jesus asked, what do you want me to do? And they said, we want to receive sight. When Jesus touched their eyes, saying to them, your faith has made you well. According to your faith, let it be done. And they were healed. I'm not saying... It's everything, but what I am saying that it has a lot to do with what you and I will receive from God and experience from God, because if you don't believe that He will do it, you are never going to ask Him to do it. So before we look at anything, we have to understand this whole thing about the issue of faith, and that is very important. Let me just say that this 
Let me just say this by way of just, uh, uh, you know, the background to say what I'm about to say. If there is one thing the devil wants to attack in your life, it's your faith. The one thing the devil wants to attack in your life is your faith. At times people will say, oh, it's the devil taking my marriage. At times he does. The devil is taking my finances. The, take, the devil is taking my, my work where I work. But what he is really attacking is your faith. Everything he attacks is to get at our faith. Why? Because our faith moves mountains. Because our faith moves mountains. Because our faith moves mountains. Because our faith stirs heaven. Because our faith rebukes hell. Because our faith leads to healing. Because our faith gives us courage. Because our faith gives us confidence. Because our faith gives us boldness. Because our faith makes miracles possible. Because faith gives us that tenacity to keep believing, to keep present, to keep going when everything else inside of us tells us to give up. Faith tells us, don't give up. Keep going. God is faithful. He honors faith because faith honors him. Faith, church, is very important. I mean, the apostle Paul understood this. He, he, he was saying, and, and the apostle, he says, you know, he went to the uh, town and called Thessalonica and, and, and the Greece, and, and Greece, and he, he was there for a few weeks. And he cared for the people there. He loved on those people. He ministered to them. And then when he leaves, he's worried about the church. What does he care most about when it comes to the church? What is it that he's concerned about? And so he sent Timothy to check on them. And what is his concern when Timothy, when Timothy checks on them? It wasn't the size of the parking lot. It wasn't, you know, what color the carpet was. What he cares about is about their faith. So Paul says to them, you know, we send Timothy, who's the, our brother and God's fellow worker, and he is spreading the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you in your faith and to find, and to find out about your faith. Why? Because if your faith is weak, you are weak. If your faith is weak, you are weak. If your faith is shallow, the work of God in your life will be shallow. All that simply to say, your faith and the condition of your faith may be the most important thing about your work with Christ. And so with that in mind, let me ask you, what is faith? Probably the best definition of faith, you will find it in Hebrew 11, 1. It says, now faith is. I want you to stop there for a moment because it says it in the present tense. It doesn't say faith was. It says faith is. Faith is active. Faith is vibrant. Faith is never passive unless what Christ has done for us and he's the only one that is working. But even then, faith is always active. It's always faith in, faith in obedience, faith in works, faith in hope, faith in love. And this verse tells us some things about, about faith. It tells us, first of all, that faith is confidence. Now, faith is assurance of things hoped for. You see, what happens is the things that you have faith about, the things that you are believing for, actually begin to take on an in, in essence or a substance of the reality. One of the things that I remember when my mom and dad, we used, they were in, in, in Chile, and God spoke to them and said, I'm going to take you to a faraway land, and it will be full of grass, there will be green pasture everywhere. So, okay. 20 years later, we moved from South America, from, sorry, from Chile to Argentina when I was about seven years old. And again, God has spoke to my mom and dad and said, I'm going to take you and your descendants to a faraway land where there's a lot of green pastures, 
Little they know that seven, seven years after that, God had opened the doors for all my family to have, re- to have visas to go to the place called New Zealand. It was God who had it right from the beginning. It is God who opened the door. But God from the beginning had, had my mom had begun to, you know, begin to believe in what God had spoken into her life. There is an instant when you and I walk by faith, the things that we are praying about, the things that we are sensing God wants to do because I believe that it's not just asking God to do things, but there are times when faith is just sensing what God is doing. And there is such a sense that, that that sense begins to have substance. Are you with me, church? Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. In other words, faith is the confidence of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I have a chair here. And I'm just going to sit down for a moment. Now, I have no idea where this, where this chair was made. I didn't get to check the label to see it was made in China or made in New Zealand or in Australia. But I had full confidence when I came and sat down on this chair that this chair would hold me up. Now let me tell you, church, I know nothing about this chair. I know nothing about this chair. I could chill on the chair and the chair would hold me up. But I know more about God. The Bible tells me a whole lot about God. And yet we struggle to believe that God can come through for us. Listen, when you know the word of God, when you are walking with God, the longer you walk with him, the more you're in his presence, the more you spend time with God, the more you read his word, the more he was going to come, the more assurance or confidence you have. And all of a sudden what happens is your faith gives you confidence about the things that you are hoping for, the things that you are believing for. It's no longer, oh, I hope that works. It's more like, I know it's going to work. I have confidence that God is a God who is able to do the things that I'm hoping for, believing for, and he's able to bring it to pass. God is a God who does those things. You see, church, we are not in a a religion that's a a hope-so religion. We're not in a, a wishful religion. When you pray, you're not wishing upon a star. When you pray, when you seek the face of God, when you seek his presence, when you seek him with all your heart, when you are walking by faith and not by sight, what happens is that faith begins to rise up, faith begins to make God's will, God's plan, God's power over your life. God's direction is so real in your life and and in the lives of others. And all of a sudden, we have an assurance of the things that we are hoping for. We have confidence. Faith is confidence. Faith is conviction. In Hebrews 11, in another version, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. I'm talking about conviction. This is not about our preference of that and that. A conviction is part of my soul. It's part of my being. It's something that I hold on to internally. It's something that I'm convicted of. It's something that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know. I mean, when a person lives out of conviction, there is power. When you and I understand, when we have a certain conviction, it guides our lives. It directs our lives in the same way that faith does. For example, I've got some convictions. I have the conviction that the, that the Word of God, the Word of God rightly is under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, will transform people's lives. That is the conviction that I have. My opinion, I don't preach my opinions because my opinions cannot transform people's lives, but I do know that the Word of God can. I have a conviction when I pray, God answers my prayer. I have a conviction when I pray, God answers my prayer. And I remember when I was seven years old, my mom and dad would take me to the hospital. I I had chronic uh, lung respiratory disease, whatever it was, but 
I wasn't, I wasn't able to breathe properly, and so they would take me to the hospital, and back in those days, to bring the temperature down, they would put you in a tub full of ice. And I remember being in that tub and seeing my mum and dad crying and calling out God. And here I am, a seven-year-old, and I'm saying, God, if you are the same God, if you are real, if you, you, you're using my mum and dad to, to spread the gospel, you are able to heal me. Heal me, I pray. I remember so clearly calling out upon the name of God, if you heal me, I promise you I will serve you the rest of my life. And can I tell you that I have never looked back. I know that when, I know that he answers prayer when the church prays. When we get together and the more we get together as a church and pray, the more God is going to do Signs and wonders in our midst, amen? amen? It is a conviction. I got faith in my giving. When I give, I know that God will bless me. I don't have to say, oh, I hope he blesses me. I just know, I know, and I know. I know there is a heaven. I've got a conviction that there is a heaven, and heaven is a real place. I've never seen it. It is invisible to the natural eye. It's not seen, but I know it's there, and we will go there one day. Amen. I have a conviction that God saves. I have a conviction that God heals. I have a conviction that God has a plan for your life, for my life. You see, faith is a confidence in God and a conviction regarding things that you and I cannot see. That you know, that you know, that you know, that you know. Call it, if you will, an intuition. That is conviction. And it's suddenly you know what you couldn't have known before, that it's, that it's faith, and all of us need to grow in that. Faith is the channel by which you and I not only receive from God, but, but sense that God is doing, and as we walk with him by faith. So what is faith? Faith is the confidence and its conviction. So why is faith so important? Because faith pleases God. We learn about faith from the Old Testament heroes. One crucial and amazing detail stands out in their lives. They place their whole confidence in God. They are entrusting uh, themselves into his hands. Their actions and accomplishments and of these men and women proved that faith pleases God and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Enoch. Enoch walked with God for 365 days and years, sorry, not days, 365 years. And the Bible tells us that God just took him. He didn't even die. God just took him because God saw his faithfulness and how much he was pleased into him. God just took him. And I'm saying, please, God, do that. By faith, Noah, he built an ark when he didn't even know what rain was. By faith, Jacob, he wrestled with God. He had an encounter with God, and he became Israel, a prince with God. By faith, Joseph, he went from being in the pit, he went straight to the palace. They are people who walked by faith. Their circumstances varied. Some lived in in a sea of wickedness and craziness. Others lived relatively quiet lives. But some had very active lives, but all of them had a confidence in God. And all of them had a conviction regarding things they could not see. By by faith, Abraham, when God called him to, to a place, he obeyed. And when, even though he didn't know where he was going, he couldn't see where he was going. He didn't know where he was going, but he knew that God was calling him. Therefore, he went. This is a life of faith. This has been assured what we hope for. What was he hoping for? His own land. What was he certain of? Something that he could not see. That's the life of faith. By faith he met his time in a promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived there in tents, but he 
but he's not looking at that. He's looking forward to the city with foundation whose architect and builder is God. He can't see. He can't see it, but he is certain of it. He can't see it, but he is confident that God's calling him. That's the life of faith. The life of faith is not knowing how everything is going to play, how everything is going to work out. The life of faith is knowing that you've, you've heard the voice of God, you've read the word of God, God has quickened you, and now you're walking in it. That is the life of faith. By faith, Moses, he had grown up and he refused to be known as the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. Why? Because he would rather suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin in Egypt. Because he was looking forward, he was looking ahead to his reward. Could he see it? No. But he was certain of something that he, cannot, he could not see. Listen, if you have to see everything before you're going to do anything, you cannot walk by faith. And this is what trips a lot of people up when it comes to receiving Christ. Well, if I could just see it, if I could just see him, if I could just hear that and do that and this and this. Listen, God is speaking to you. God is calling you. And that's the start of faith. And when you say, I believe the word of God, Jesus died for my sins, I believe I have to act on that. And when I act on it, I will be saved. And then at that point, faith is activated in your life and it results in salvation. After when you got saved, did you know what was going to happen to you? Did you know what, was, what God was going to do? But you started the journey. And praise God you did. And as you look back, you're like, I'm so glad that I took this step. I couldn't see it, you couldn't see it, but you were confident. You couldn't see it, but you but you were certain of you were certain of, and that's faith. You see, faith hears. Hears the inaudible. Faith sees the invisible. That's why it does the impossible. Faith hears what nobody else hears. Don't expect the people at work to hear what, you're, what you can hear. Don't expect them to see what you see. People say, oh, that's crazy. I can't go for that. I don't believe that. I don't see it that way. Of course they do, don't. They're not walking by faith. Listen, there's some of you, there's some of us here in this house, you are too caught up with the questions. But let me tell you that God can handle your questions. God is more than able to answer your questions. But if you have to have every question answered to walk by faith, can I tell you honestly, church, you'll never walk by faith. God will give us enough. He will give us just enough information to take the next step, just enough information to move forward. But he's not going to answer every question. The thing that has stopped so many people from stepping out and walking by faith is that they have to know how everything is going to work out. They have to know how everything is going to end up before they take the first step. And no journey of faith can be that way. And God is calling. God is calling everybody in this church to a new level of faith, a new level of faith and of confidence and conviction in him. It's time to grow up. Because God wants to do something in everybody's life in this room. So we walk in by faith because faith pleases God. In Hebrews 11 verse 6 it says, And without faith it is impossible to please God. You can be as good as a person as you want to be, but if you don't have faith, you're not going to please God. Listen, what we have to settle in our heart is that it pleases God when you and I believe him to do the things that are impossible in our lives. It pleases God when you and I believe that he's big enough to do it, personal enough to care about what you're doing it, and, and, and what, happens, what will happen is when you and I go to God and believe that he exists and we believe that he rewards those who earnestly seek him and we say to God, I'm believing you to do the impossible in my life. I believe that you can do the impossible in my life. 
Do you believe it this morning, church? I believe that you can answer my prayers. I believe that you can heal me. I believe that you can direct me. I believe that you can strengthen me. I believe that you can provide for me. I believe that you can. I believe that there is nothing, there is nothing impossible for you. And God says, you know what? I just can't wait. I can't wait to help you. I can't wait to to bring that miracle to pass. I can't wait to heal you. I can't wait to strengthen you. I can't wait to touch your life. I can't wait to show my glory in your situation so that the world can see the power in my glory. The only way the world will see His power and His glory is through your life, church. So I'm going to honor the faith, God says, because the faith has honored me. Faith pleases God. How do I get more faith? In Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Can I encourage you this morning, church, to get to the word of God. Get the word of God inside you. You know, what happens is when you listen to the Word of God, it begins to change you. It begins to renew your mind. It begins to say, you know what, I used to think this way, but because I've been reading the Word of God, I I, I, change, I, I think differently now. God begins to change you from the inside out. He begins to renew your mind. The Word of God has the renewing effect on your mind. The Word of God is powerful and it's sharp on the two-edged sword. It cuts right to the center of your very being. That's how powerful the Word of God is. In Mark chapter 5, 25, it reminds me of the story of the woman of the issue of blood. She had been sick for 12 years, bleeding nonstop. She had been identified as an unclean person. But she heard about Jesus. She said to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'm going to be made well. She did it. She stepped out in faith and touched his garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? The the disciples are like, what do you mean who touched me? There's a whole crowd around you. What do you mean who touched you? Jesus said, the power had come out of him. And when he met with the woman, he said, your faith has made you well. She received it. She was healed. And you know, that, that day, she was the only woman that got healed. She, she was the only person that got healed that day. Why? Because she heard that Jesus was coming. She said it. If I could only touch his garment, she did it. She pressed through the crowd. And then even though she was so weak, she kept on pressing. She did not give up. She received her healing. In the midst of the crowd, Jesus is stopped for one person. And can I tell you that Jesus is here. He is stopping for you this morning. Jesus stopped for one person because she touched Jesus by faith. She was seeking for Jesus, you know, going through the crowd. And Jesus found her. In a crowd of confusion, in a crowd of chaos, Jesus found her and healed her. Her touch was a touch of faith. In the next two minutes, we are going to pray. And I would love for you to join me. But this morning, I'm also reminded about a man called Moses. When God took him out of Egypt, God called him into the ministry to to, to set the people free, to bring the people out of Egypt. And, and, And Moses said to God, but who should I say who sent me? Tell them, I am sent you. What do you mean? What do you mean? What does it mean I am sent you? Can I tell you, church, to the sick, I am your healer. To the lost, I'm your shepherd. To the oppressed, I am your deliverer. 
to those in financial pressure, I am your provider. To the weak, I am your strength. I am all that you need me to be. To the sick, I am your healer. To the lost, I am your shepherd. To the depressed, I am your deliverer. I am your Prince of Peace. And this morning, God is here to touch your life. We're not just doing church. The whole thing is about you taking a step of faith and believe that God can touch your life this morning.